Hello world, I am what if study and today we are doing what if Deku was well a Templar Knight. Part one. We begin in the young life of Deku back in the well, 1400s, somewhere around there. A plague was going around. People were losing their faith. All the knights trying to protect the people only told them that religion would sign away their fate. The only thing that they could trust themselves into. Deku was one of the common rabble among the streets. A son of a royal house member. A committee he was part of. Deku was a young upstart. However, only saw the way of the blade as his way through life. He usually dueled his friends. Quickly, he learned to take hits on the face and then, well, hit them back. Even harder. His father told him that as long as he can take a hit and deal it out twice as much, then it's worth it. So, Deku started out as sort of a backstreet brawler, you could call him, until plague hit harder and harder it did as the people grew wary the streets no longer walked through people only swaths of deads well that's what they called them the dead rain rats mucking around the street alleyways Deku knew what they were what they caused he crushed every single one underneath his foot until uh, a man stopped by right in front of him as he was crushing one of the rats. A hand pressed down to his side. Boy, the hell are you doing here? This is uh, unrestricted access, I believe. What you would need to be here. Deku looks up to him, then looks down to the rat. Is it cuts the rat, sir? <laughs> At least he knows his manners. No, it's not because of the rat. It's because of your disobedience. You're the son of Mal of Malcolm, correct? Yes, I am the son of Malcolm. Come, sit on my saddle. I shall teach you how to ride a horse. That'll be your first lesson. L lesson? Yes. Your father had sold y you off to the Templar. He did what? Oh, don't be so. Don't be like that. You're going to make this much harder for me in the long run, then. As he's plopped up onto the horse and taught how to ride by the new Templar Knight. By the end of the day, he was beaten. Uh, almost uh, straining onto life. After he had spent the whole entire day on horseback, his back was broken into. He lied dead on the ground in the barn. Once you actually prove yourself as a royal squire, then you shall sleep in the Templar. Good night, as he throws down a sort of stick uh, right next to Deku and gives him a little bit of hay under his head. He leaves as then he comes back the next day and the next and the next, teaching him different stuff about the different uh, you know parts of be of being a knight. Of course, he has to grow up as a Templar knight, so he sticks way closer to those around the Templar. He gets to know a lot more about uh, religion than most of the knights do. He, he's almost coveted by almost all the all the priests that hang around the normal grounds. He learned to trust the priests, as they were his only suffice thing to discuss his sins with, which mostly were beating the shit out of his friends, and one that he accidentally killed. And when the day came, he was finally knighted. Well, squired, really. He was not a full knight. However, he was allowed to stay behind one and learn from him. 
I think it's time that you get a, ro a right proper one. Arthur, could you handle this one for me? Ugh. Hold on, let me finish this beer. Yeah, what do you want? Uh, young... What was your name again? Uh, Deku. Young Deku, squire now. Squire at that age? Yes, he is quite promising. He has been wanting to, um, you know, discover the sword for quite a while now. He wants to... Be, I want you to be... I mean, him to your, be your squire. Arthur, please, take him. As he, as he holds out the training sword that he had used with Deku. Arthur looks up to him and throws his beer down onto the onto the table, starting on all the men as his brute strength seems to course through when he's drunk. Uh, all right, but none of that pussy shit. As he flicks out the hand, um, flicks out the you know sword from the hand of uh, the Templar Knight. What are you planning? Uh, just you watch. <laughs> As he takes out his actual sword from his side, and um, and shines it straight onto Deku's face, two inches away, um, and Deku's face is shocked. He is flinches back onto his ba and falls down onto his back as he starts to crawl away. <sighs> He's not worthy to be my squire. D uh, what type of a test is that? You know, even I would fall to it. Your sword. Uh, fine. I'll give him three days. And if he flinches again, I'll go harder than I've ever done before. And if he flinches, I know, I know. I'll train the boy. Good. Now let me enjoy my drink, am I right? Yeah! As, all, as he returns back to his quarters. With all the rest of the men. <sighs> Get up, kid. We have some training to do. How much sleep do you need? None, as long as I can be able to stand up to that blade. You're only ten, kid. Don't get too excited. As um, Deku then trains with real swords against his Templar master. My name is Elonius. You remember it well. Take up your sword, hold it sternly, and defend every strike that comes after you. Don't flinch. Don't let your god, Dwayne. Because if it does, he will kill you. This is, of course, a lie. However, he bit on his tongue to do so. He confesses the lie later to his sort of suit, to one of the priests. However, they understand his sin. He struck against Deku's sword, batting it out of the way. However, Deku returned it back to its original position just as fast. Good. Strikes it down again. Strikes it over and over and over again until there is no movement. Three days pass of just striking the sword. And he falls, lifeless, as his, as his knees strike into the earth, and falls down onto the ground. Deku, standing there, out of breath, as his whole body bruised, battered, and beaten, shines through the light. Scuff marks around his sword. The sword had been bent in more than him. It was bent in multiple directions. He didn't know how to hold it truly until now, what it meant. But why? Why did his master have to? As he turns him over. Oh, thank God, he's not dead. I'll, I'll finish this for you. The, ne um, the next five minutes, he r runs into the Templar, challenging... Uh, Arthur, as Arthur gets up and says, All right, finally. I have been waiting a while. Do not uh, disappoint me, kid. 
Uh, I won't. I see. I hear hesitation. I won't. There we go. Now, kid, rise your sword. <laughs> As then he swats that sword out of Deku's hand. Too weak. Try again. Deku picks it up again and holds it sternly into his hand, as then the strike comes faster than before, harder be than before, but it doesn't ricochet out of his hands. He understands now. Good. Now, the final test. <laughs> as then, uh, Arthur, uh, not fast, however, with intense strength, he riles up his sword to strike down the heavens almost. As most of the priests uh, gather around watching this, say, Arthur, you'll kill him! Oh, God damn it, Arthur. As then Arthur brings it down, saying, Hammer down! As then the sword clashes onto Deku's. However, Deku stares him dead in the eyes and pushes him back. Arthur, of course, had let him push him back. And Arthur's, um, and the, you know, the splash effect from it had knocked many people away. And had sent Arthur's sword flying. <laughs> There's my kid! Alright! As then Deku, you know, all intense, falls down onto the ground, letting his hands finally rest. They were shaking violently. Uh, no, Arthur puts his hand down onto the kid's shoulder. There, there. Calm down. You're now with the best. And the best is what shall you get. Come. I shall teach you for the next... Uh, ten years? Nah. Fuck it. Twenty. I will make you the greatest that there's ever been. You don't have to worry about that. As his master finally walks through the door. Deku! Are you okay? Deku, as he sees him on the ground, sort of, with his hands you know, shaking, he sees the massive explosion that had happened of energy. What did you do? God damn it, uh, Arthur. He passed. Calm down. Is this true, Deku? Yes, I, I think. My boy! As he smiles bigger than he had ever done before. Deku is allowed into the training. And for the next 20 years, he is tra taught by Arthur. Once he becomes about 42, Deku is basically two times more powerful than Arthur and ha is taught the, the hammer down technique, blind faith technique. And uh, because his devotion to the cause, he was given the right to defend the Holy Grail. After many years of training and fighting, um, he has acquired many skills around that of a knight. He holds a great sword, however, you know, what we consider a great sword today is technically different than what they would consider a great sword back then. However, it has the same weight as something that you'd imagine today. He he is known for being the greatest warrior that they have ever seen. And he's not too shabby at being the greatest priest. He can out sermon any of the priests himself. However, his blind faith to the devotion has always made him charge into a battle that well, may not be his own. He has a thick, you know, sort of uh, pre-justice about most people that he sees as sinners. He has also a special technique that he can use once a day. His left eye can see injustice. Only something that a defender of the Holy Grail can use. Therefore, he was the best candidate to protect the Holy Grail. Forever and after. As, you know, the temple r reveals to him that while they've been protecting the Holy Grail for almost a, a 200 years now, it's been on attack. It's been attacked by so many. That's why this valley is so important to them. 
we they want you to defend the Holy Grail, Arthur tells him. I hope you can forgive me for this. There's nothing to forgive, brother. We have fought through so many battles. I wouldn't tr if I didn't trust you with my life, well, where would I be right now? Probably in the dirt. That's right, brother Arturus. <laughs> I believe in you. Drink from the goblet to receive eternal life. Then, and only then, will you defend the <laughs> Holy Grail. He drinks blood dripped from the, uh, well, what, what's his name called again? The Pope? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blood from the Pope that was in the Holy Grail to receive eternal life. Then shown to the cave where he would hide it. Many wonders, uh, gold, riches, but beyond your imagination are there. He's laid to rest sitting on the, uh, sitting inside of the chambers a gigantic you know golden throne waiting for him his sword nudged between his legs he falls asleep as they sing a sermon walking out arthur didn't like the plan however it was needed Uh, not yet. I'm so tired. Five more minutes. Come on. <laughs> God, fine. I'm up. I'm up. What time is it? Oh, what day is it, actually? As Deku wakes up again. What were those massive explosions? I have to get up so early. He feels around, feeling the dust uh, that had molded around him, his rusted sword as drip, um, as water dripped through the ceiling onto it. I'll have to coat that when I get back into town. Oh, how long has it been? Oh, God. There's that accent from Arthur again. I wonder how he's doing nowadays. He's probably much older by now, seeing as everything around here has been uh, aged. He walks out of the cave, out into the limelight. He shifts over the, uh, the boulder to reveal the sunlight and the valley below, covered by forest. All of civilization, around him at least, destroyed, covered. What? Impossible. No way. How, how long has it been? He walks back in, seeing that the goblet is gone. The Holy Grail. God damn it, I failed in so many ways. Who the hell? Well, I'm not going to figure it out by staying here. I have to track down whoever took it. Maybe the Pope will give me answers. But the Pope isn't here anymore. Oh, this is so confusing. Oh, where am I, anyways? In today's standards. From what I remember, I was... I was in Italy. As he walks out, he sees this... He's now on an island instead. It seems like Italy has become an island nation. It changed, the geography has. He starts exploring out into the into the world, finding every, well, trying to find the goblin. Thank you so much for watching. I'm actually going to end it here since I am tired of shit. So I'm gonna just see you next time. Yeah, sorry, I don't I don't have much energy left. Honestly, this one's a very interesting, enjoyable one actually. Uh, stick around for the next episode because I will be doing. Uh, a lot more characters, actually. I'm going to have one that you guys are going to love. I know that, for sure. So just be there for that. All right. See you sometime somewhere.